San Diego is known for palm trees, but they're not even from here. Let's suck some bugs! Our question was what kind of impact Canary Island Palm had on our ecosystem. We got this, and we're awesome. <laughs> Major funding for Sci Girls is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Additional funding provided by L'Oreal USA for Girls in Science. You can learn more at forgirlsinscience.org and by PPG Industries Foundation, committed to bringing positive impact to our communities. There's a place I go for inspiration. Gotta get to the web, check the girls' investigation. What the? the same as he always does to me. There's definitely something wrong. Me and Fang, we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> now that I believe. Look, I got him this sweet new pad. And he's not even excited. Well, maybe he doesn't like it. Doesn't like it? Check it out. It's got an Eden kitchen, infinity pool, a rec room, and two and a half baths. <laughs> yeah, maybe those things aren't exciting to a mouse. Who's not excited about a pool and a rec room? The two and a half baths are important for the resale value. Come on, little buddy. I did your whole room in cheddar yellow. Um, maybe a condo in South Beach style isn't what mice are into? If not this, then what? Uh, I don't know. Hey, well, let's see if the side girls can help us out. Side girls! Little mouse, big problem. What have you got for us? Watch for the arrows. They're clues for the pick 'em stick 'em game on the website. I think living in Southern California is really great for beach days like this. It's really nice just to go out and relax. I'm Alicia. I have lived in San Diego my whole life, so I'm a San Diego girl. <laughs> What I really like about San Diego is that people are actually trying to help our planet. With Girl Scouts, we've done a lot of beach cleanup, and I think it's really cool because you get to see the nature around you, and you're actually having fun, but then you're also making your beach a lot nicer. I love living at San Diego because it's always warm. Even when it's cold, it's not that cold. I'm Ashley. I love San Diego because stuff grows year-round. Right now, we're in winter, even though it doesn't look like it. <laughs> Picture, okay. Leah brought her camera because she loves scrapbooking. To live here is amazing, and you don't need to ask that. Just look around. Oh <laughs> I'm Leah. I like volunteering and helping the environment, and I think it's a really great thing to help your community, and I think it makes you well-rounded. Yeah. Today, we planted a willow tree here near the San Diego Riverbank and it's to help restore the natural native plants because there are a lot of non-native plants that are taking over the area. If you were to cut the Sorundo in a week, it could be knee high. In a month, it could be head high. That's how fast it grows, so that's why it can outcompete some of the native species here. It's not like the Sorundo plant is bad, but we don't want too much of it. Are you familiar with some of the other introduced plants? We met Teresa, and she's an ecologist at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography. Actually, I have a project just across the river where I'm looking at the effects of an introduced plant on the native species. Oh, cool. So mostly looking at um, insects and some of the arachnids, but maybe you guys could come check it out. Yeah, that's fun. Teresa brought us to some traps 
that were set underneath palm tree and a willow tree. And we looked at the different types of species that fell in. And the pitfall trap, as you'll see, is just a little white bucket that we put flush in the ground. And we want to see what animals are living here. We really had no idea what we were doing. And we didn't really know what pitfall buckets were until we opened our first one. It's a stink bug. <gasps> oh, I see, it, I see it. Looks like a little spider. Yeah, a lot of. <laughs> Spiders. Yeah, I don't see any beetles in there so far. We have a few more pitfall traps set out that we're going to collect today. Okay. Let's move on out. Oh, I see a beetle. There's just yeah. a lot of spiders. Yeah. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> it's really dry under here. Yeah. It's yeah. really protecting from the rain. It's protected, right. So there's a lot of leaf litter. It's sort of dry. There's not that many bugs, though, really. There's some Argentine ants. This is a ground beetle. I don't know if he sits still. You can kind of see his little jaws on him. Like little itty bitty sticks that are walking on you. They <laughs> <laughs> boobs on me. That's just part of the job, being a scientist. You want to hold it, Ashley? Here, can I do bare hand? Bear him? Yeah. At first, I was a little freaked out because, I don't know, it's a beetle. <laughs> then, like, after you see it crawling around on other people's hands, you're like, oh, OK, I can hold that. And then when you poke them, they ball up, which is why they're also called pill bugs. <gasps> oh, oh! It's so cute! Oh, look at it! It's a baby lizard. <laughs> It looks like a western fence lizard. The lizard was pretty cool. We named him Jeffrey, and he was cute, and he was really small, and very cold. I think he does look like a Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> the other bucket that we found, it's completely different from all the other ones because it has a lot less spiders. It makes you think maybe it's the area that I was in. I think he ate all the spiders in there. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's why there's no more spiders. He's so cute. <laughs> he weighs like a penny. You can feel the scales and stuff. Yeah. Hi, Jeffrey. <laughs> Finding Jeffrey the lizard made my whole day. Bye, Jeffrey. Say bye. Bye, bye Jeffrey. Jeffrey. So all these palms you're seeing in San Diego, not native, not from here. I had no idea that palms were not from the US, let alone San Diego or Southern California. San Diego is known for palm trees, but they're not even from here, which is surprising. It's the Canary Island date palm, so it's from the Canary Islands, which is an island in the Atlantic. When they wanted to build missions here, they came with the palm tree, and they started planting some of them, and then they ended up spreading out everywhere. So for your project, we might pursue that more, of looking at the differences between palm and willow, and how those differences translate to maybe what animals are using them. I'm not really sure what I want to study right now. There's a lot of different opportunities, but I think we'll come to something soon. I think we should really compare the willow tree, you guys think, and the canary yeah. palm? Yeah. Because okay. yeah. one's non-native, one's native. Why one tree's leaves are thicker than the others? So like the string, comparing yeah, them? Yeah, the string. It would probably show why bugs would like it better, because it's easier to chew. Our question was to see what kind of impact Canary Island palm had on our ecosystem. So how many like trees do you guys want to check out? We could check out like maybe two or three each. We're not tall enough, you know, to get in the tree, so how do we do that? How do we check what lives up there? Uh, maybe we can check in the bark, because maybe Good morning, some of the... ladies. We have some ideas that we would like to try out. First, we were thinking of checking what lives up in the trees and seeing what plants surround the trees, because you know how some trees get more sunlight. For the willow tree and the palm tree, if you have like some way to measure the density uh, of the leaves. Of the leaves? Yeah. Good, good. The first test, we want to see what kind of bugs and insects live in the willow tree and in the palm. Our second test was to see leaf toughness. And our third test was to see what kind of plants live underneath the palm and the willow tree. So we were thinking maybe we could collect some bugs off of the tree and maybe test them or see like maybe there's different bugs on the different trees. Oh, that's excellent. So what I have in the car is it's basically a leaf blower that's reversed, so it's a giant bug vacuum. And what we'll do is use that to vacuum as far as we can reach up into the canopy of willow and the palm. I'm very, very excited because we're gonna suck the bugs off of the tree and then we're gonna inspect them in the lab. Hi, I'm Leah. I'm 13 years old and I live in San Diego, California. Leah's room, my room, come on in. Something I really love doing on my free time is painting nails, especially my cousin's nails. Something else I like to do is play soccer. This is my dog, Lucky. Something I 
can't wait to do my free time with her friends. Bye! Towards us was a bug sucker. She looked like a ghostbuster, like a bug buster, since we were gonna get some bugs. Is that what the is? bug sucker? The bug sucker. This is gonna be so much fun. We're gonna suck up bugs, literally. <laughs> so we'll go back and forth, and one of us will be timing, and then when 20 seconds is up, we'll say, and then you can stop. It's the first palm. Let's suck some bugs. Let's suck some bugs. <laughs> Shaking a lot, so I was like, Ugh. <laughs> but it was 20 seconds right there. It was like really surprising. That's how you really got the bugs. You know, you, I thought it would be something more scientific, but really, it's a leaf blower in reverse. <laughs> nice, nice job, Alicia. Job, Alicia. Job. Our second test was to see leaf toughness. This is called a penetrometer, and what it does is it measures pressure. A penetrometer kind of looks like a toy needle, and you hold the leaf and you puncture it, and then it'll tell you how strong or how tough the leaf is. It's measured in kilograms per square centimeter. So we want to get a nice green leaf, and now it's going to take some pressure, but whatever it takes to break that leaf. Set, go. 1.0. 1.0. That's how many kilograms per square centimeter. And our third test was to see what kind of plants live underneath either the palm or the willow tree. Ideally, we would do a bunch of these quadrats all around the tree. A quadrat is a square, and you put it down on the ground, and then you decide roughly how much is the percentage of each thing that's inside there. What percent of this quadrat is taken up by green plants? What percent is taken up by plant litter, so dead leaves and twigs, and what percent is open space? So we have 75% for leaves, 15% for open, and 10% for plant. Does that sound right? Yep. We picked three pairs of palms and willows to test. Willow number one. <laughs> <laughs> 0.25. 10% open and 10% leaves, 80% plants. Let's suck some bugs! <laughs> There's some Argentine ants. Palm number two. There we go. I think it's 100% litter. Plants can't live underneath the leaf litter because it's blocking all the sunlight and rain from going through there. Yeah, 1.5. Oh, oh, this is willow number two. 80% plant, 5% litter, and 50% open. 0.25 kilograms. Palm number three. Okay, that's cute. Oh. 95% <laughs> litter, 5% plants. I think palms provide a house, but they're not as good as a food source. 1.5. Towards the end of our day with the bug sucker, this wouldn't turn on anymore. And so Teresa was like trying to start them over and over and over. It's frustrating. We're out here, everybody's here, everybody's excited, and it's nice to wrap up, but also you have to expect these sorts of um, challenges that come up. I was feeling a little frazzled considering we really planned to have three done, but we already had two samples done from each tree of all the steps. It was okay because we already have something to compare. Tomorrow we're going to look at our bugs that we caught today with the microscope, and we're going to sort them out and collect data from it and see how many bugs we caught in each tree. Hi, my name's Alicia. I have two cats and three dogs. And I love riding my scooter. This is my dad, and we're gonna play ping pong. I'm gonna show you guys some tricks that my dogs can do. This is my friend Nairobi, and we're gonna do boxing. Bye, thanks for watching. <laughs>
Today I am excited to look in the microscopes and to compare the willow tree and the palm. You each get a guide to ID the animals today. A field guide is like a little book of like the bugs that we might find in there, like some of the beetles, and it was very helpful. We're sorting through the, all the different types of insects and bugs. In willow vial number one. Yeah, I really think that's the wasp because the coloring and the texture of the wings. What? Oh, maybe it kind of looks like that. Really? Well, sort of, but. Yeah, I can see that. You like that one, I think. So uh, leaf beetles? A small grasshopper. Oh, well, yeah, that's definitely a leaf hopper, don't yeah. you think? I think that's a mesh web weaver. They both have hairy abdomens. On willow one, we found 10 categories of different kinds of insects. Okay, let's look at palm number one. Okay. Oh, oh there's goodness. a spider. No, this one, this one, this one. The ant mimic spider. Yes, the ant mimic spider. Oh, hey, you guys, it's this one. You just ripped what? off his leg. It's not like he needed it. It seems like palm one has a lot less bugs than like willow one. This is palm two. I think Argentina is probably the most popular. Okay, so it probably not the bark lice because the wings aren't like that. Maybe it's a brown lace wing. And I think so too. Okay, you guys, this is our last sample, willow number two. That's an ant. That's an ant. Yep. I think it's a sweat That's bee. a wasp. Oh, yeah, that wasp. is a wasp. Hey, how's it going? Good. Oh, you've got a lot done. I thought sorting the bugs was actually pretty fun because when you look at them without the microscope, they just look like a fly. But then when you look at the field guide and like you see like it could be a wasp or a bee or or some type of flying insect. What do you think that is? That is a true bug, a hemipteran. A true bug is something that is actually truly a bug by its qualities. A bug needs to have six legs and no more or no less. Do we have more species on palm or on willow? And then if there's more species on palm, all those other measurements we took, we could try to infer or make up an explanation why. You know, what I'm saying here is that there's a lot more bugs on the willow tree than the palm. Our conclusions are heading towards the willow being a better tree overall for the animals and the plants than the palm tree. Okay, from sucking up the materials under the bed where Fang used to sleep, we've learned two things. What are they? Number one, you don't clean under your bed very often. Bunny slippers, socks from I don't know when. Hmm, <laughs> 2009, I think. Didn't they stop making lava chips with red dye number three when we were, like, in fifth grade? I'm preserving this wrapper as a piece of fluorescent snack history. Mmm, like new. So, what else did we learn? Oh, yeah, that mice are afraid of vacuum cleaners. Fang? Hey, why don't we let Fang tell us what he likes? So, mice like grass, flowers, a cozy place to curl up. And witness the Jake's natural habitat. A bean bag, chips, and bunny slippers. <sighs> Does evolution ever go backwards? native plant garden to get some more research about native plants. All the plants that are in here are all native to San Diego. This is a Cleveland sage. Sages are low water using plants. This is called Toyon. They grow lava terra here at the garden uh, because of its habitat for birds. It's some other good alternatives in trees. Scrub oaks, the arroyo willow, tory pines. We have a lower area that we're it was called like the palm tree forest. And we're taking out all the palms. Palm trees suck up all the surface water. The native plants aren't able to get water. So they had to remove all the palm trees around the native garden. What's so. going to go here once they're all gone? You know, that's a good question. And maybe something that you guys could help provide suggestion or input on. Maybe we could even have a butterfly garden, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. By just putting a bunch of hot rocks in some of the native flowers. Yeah. That sounds like a really neat idea that um, if you guys wanted to explore further, we'd we'd be very interested in. Shannon thought our plan was amazing, and I think that it would be really good to get our school involved, and it's really nice that we can help our community, and we're able to come up with these ideas on our own. Hi, I'm Ashley. This is my dog, Roxy. <laughs> and this is my guinea pig, Peanut Butter. This is Petey. This is my room, and I have a big orange foot on my wall. I love volleyball. 
This is my microscope. I love baking, especially my homemade chocolate chip brownies. I think they're done. Mmm. Bye! Okay, you guys ready to get started? Yep. We want to make the butterfly garden. So we were gonna see if our class is interested in it. Maybe we can make it a school project. We could get them and tell them like, if you help, you should come help us build it. And say like, it's gonna be there forever and it's like leaving their footprint there. Maybe we can show like a slideshow of uh, how much fun it is there. And so maybe they'll wanna go if we do that. We decided to just bring it to our class and ask them if they wanna make a butterfly garden with us. And we're gonna pitch that idea to them. We wanted to teach our class about native and non-native plants too. So we decided we were gonna show them the graphs that we made and then tell them a little bit about the project that we wanted to do with the butterfly garden. Okay, to kick it off, we should ask, do you know the difference between a native and a non-native plant? We should put two pictures. Which okay. one's from here? And we should put a palm tree and a willow. Right now, we're creating our PowerPoint for our presentation tomorrow, and we're trying to see what ideas we want in there and see in what roles we're gonna do. Oh, what about that? This yeah. is a nice picture. Maybe this one. So what's the next one? Like okay. insects and bugs. Okay. What about that? How about that what one? What is that? Okay, what's the next slide going to be about? Be a picture? The same thing. We get the idea, like, let's jump into this head first and get started, but we needed some sort of experience so we know how to handle things and know what to expect. Maybe instead of worrying about all this, we should just start practicing. right now because I don't really know what I'm supposed to say and there's being a lot of last-minute changes you guys this isn't working okay well let's practice knowing what we know so we've been learning about the past week is about non-native and native plants wait like am I three, doing the butterfly parts, garden or what I only have two no you don't yeah I do no I'm They're not doing the lab you're doing the lab so then am I explaining about microscopes you're doing the quadrant no you were doing the quadrant <laughs> Oh what are I'm you so talking confused. about? It's the quadrant and then it's the, the, the lab. Okay, now we need to practice like okay. one time really quickly. Tell them three more minutes. We're really all kind of freaking out, but I know that we know what we're talking about and we know all the facts. We got this okay. and we're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and if the slides don't work, don't worry about it because we know everything. We just learned all of this. <laughs> okay, yeah. Know. We okay. know but if, like, we know one of us this. like freezes, we have to fill it. <laughs> So we're pretty much going to talk to you guys about what we've been doing this whole week. And we've been really focusing on native and non-native plants. This is a palm tree. Now raise your hand if you think this is a native plant. Well, if you raise your hand, you're wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we did two willows and two palms to see which tree had more different types of species. This is Jeffrey. This is a picture of us using a bug sucker. Since the willow's native, how much more bugs or insects does it get than the palm? which is non-native. So according to our charts, we saw that the willow tree has a lot more types of animals than the palm. And this one is diversity. It's the number of species that we found. And we found on the willow, there was a lot more than the palm again. The next one is abundance. The total number of individual bugs and insects were found more on the willow than the palm. So as you guys can see, there's a lot more bugs and insects on the native plant, the willow, than the non-native, the palm. So we were thinking, okay, why is this? Is it because it's a native tree, or is it because bugs like it more? We found out that it's because of the leaf toughness. It's softer, so insects and bugs want to eat the softer leaf than the palm that's a lot harder. It was a great source of food for the bugs and insects. So these are some of the alternative options that you can plant instead of using a palm or something non-native when you're decorating your yard or landscaping. This is kind of our idea of the project that we really want to do. At Point Loma, Point native, Loma plant. native Plant Garden, there was this open spot where the palm trees were cut down and we wanted to put in a butterfly garden. And we were wondering if that would be something that you guys would be interested in doing. And it's like leaving your footprint in our community. So raise your hand. Please. Our class, we all work together really well, so I think it'd be really cool to do it as a project. Thank you guys for listening, and Thank hope you guys enjoyed it. I thought.
thought that their presentation was very informative. I think that it was really good. I learned a lot of new stuff that I didn't get to know before. They knew what they were talking about. They seemed organized and uh, ready to teach us some lessons. I thought the girls' presentation was fantastic. I thought they presented it in a way that kept the class totally engaged and showed what they had learned and got everyone excited about the topic, too. I'm very proud of them. Thank you so much, Teresa. Thank, oh, thank you. you. You taught us a lot. Oh, it was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed the fact that Teresa helped us. I think Teresa really admired our conclusions, considering she told us that we were amazing. Happy. <laughs> We all did really good, as I thought we would, so. <laughs> I'm very proud of Ashley and Alicia and how we were able to work so well together. And we learned so much. And the final product was amazing, but how we're still going to work on it more. Got your clues? Head on over to the web and play Pick 'em Stick 'em at pbskidsgo.org. Grass, flowers, and some place to curl up. Come on, little buddy. Yes! Look how happy he looks! Yeah, I'll take your word for it. Hope you like your new habitat, little buddy. Oh no! Where's he going? Mice might like tree trunks, but Fang's my little dude. And his natural habitat isn't complete without my bunny slipper. <laughs> wow, you really are on the same wavelength. We have a song. For Jeffrey. Yes, dedicated to Ready? our lizard. Oh, Jeffrey, you're so bad. You're so bad. You blow my mind. Go, Jeffrey. Go, Jeffrey. Go, Jeffrey. Go, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. all the time. I never even dreamed that I would be able to make one. How soon do you need the app? By Friday. Feel the fear. <laughs> I was like this the whole time. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> the video work. I don't know how you're going to fix it. And I'm multitask. I'm crocheting and I'm watching TV or trying to figure out how kids are multitasking. We created a survey. They listen to music while doing schoolwork. Is the quality of work lessened when you're multitasking? It's just good. a wonderful experience. Major funding for SciGirls is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Additional funding provided by L'Oreal USA for Girls in Science. You can learn more at forgirlsinscience.org and by PPG Industries Foundation, committed to bringing positive impact to our communities. Girls' website is off the hook. You can set up a profile, play games, create a page for your science project, watch Sci Girls videos, and have fun. So come on, be a Sci Girl on PBSKidsGo.org. See you there. Bye.